So what is there? What are the things that are there in our control, which will ensure that the outcome that we have is a good outcome in terms of achieving our end goal of wealth creation. Be able to explore uh, more than thousands of mutual funds over there. Also, we are live on our website. Uh, you can log on to bajajfinsurf.in. The expert will come on TV and he will say market is going to correct. So what we will think that boss, abhi book kar lete hain prof. Will come again. It is a continuous endeavor to bring latest news, updates, and knowledge from the world of mutual funds to our customers. Hello, everyone. Today, I'd like to welcome you all on behalf of Bajaj Finance Limited. It is a continuous endeavor to bring latest news, updates, and knowledge from the world of mutual funds to our customers and viewers, and for which we invite leaders from mutual fund industry to come and share their expertise and knowledge with us. Today, we have with us Mr. Sandeep Sharma. EVP and National Head, Retail Sales and Distribution from SBI Mutual Fund. Today, he'll talk to us about the topic, Psychology of Investing. Mr. Sandeep, I'd like to welcome you for the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rohan. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you to Bajaj Finance. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, well, before starting the session, I'd like to give a brief introduction about Mr. Sandeep. Mr. Sandeep has over 30 years of rich experiences in asset management, banking, and insurance industry. At SBI, he is responsible to drive and expand retail footprint of the fund house through various partnerships with banks, MFDs, national distributors, digital platforms, and RIAs. Prior to joining SBI Mutual Fund, he has worked with very respected brands like Kotak Asset Management, SDFC, UTI Mutual Fund, Bank of Baroda, and LIC of India. Mr. Sandeep has done his MBA from the prestigious Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi. Well, friends, today we have a very interesting topic at hand. <clears throat> the topic is psychology of investing. Friends, everything we know about investing can be summarized into one single sentence. Spend less than what you earn and invest those savings wisely. It sounds very easy, right? The question you must ask yourself, is it really so easy? And over time, I have realized it's not about knowing what to do, but getting it done in the right manner. And we feel wealth creation is about knowing the series of financial techniques of uh, what's and how to's. And we need to master those wealth creation techniques. Well, friends, even if we master those techniques, sometimes we come in the way of creating wealth for ourselves. It is a behavior that sometimes even if we master, even if we know what to do it, we come in the path of not able to create wealth for ourselves. Is there a solution to this problem? Well, friends, today, this session is all about that. Today, Mr. Sandeep will tell us how we can work on our psychology, our behavior, so that we can pave the path to wealth creation for ourselves. So friends, without wasting much time, I'd like to hand over the stage to Mr. Sandeep. Sir, uh, you, I would request you take it ahead from here. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. Uh, I will just uh, share my presentation and then I'll start. Yes. Yeah. So thank you once again, uh, Bajaj Finance, for giving us this opportunity. At SBI Mutual Fund, we strongly believe that, uh, you know, the, these investor education initiative uh, which has been taken by Bajaj Finance on a very continuous basis, definitely would create a lot many more investors who would be more informed while making their investment decisions. So as mentioned by Rohan, today we're going to talk about psychology of investing. And uh, what my objective uh, in these next 20, 25 minutes would be uh, basically to share with you what are the pitfalls that an individual faces while investing. We, you know, these days with, with so much of technology, so much of YouTube videos, so much of financial influencers, we believe that investing has become very easy. Uh, you know, during COVID, what we saw that there was suddenly such a huge surge of DMAT account opening. Every other guy who was sitting at home because they were not able to go outside started trading. And, uh, you know, there was this belief that has come into a lot of individuals that it is very easy to make money. Uh, but but as we all know, that uh, making money has never been easy. And it, it's, it's something, it's some kind of a discipline 
that one has to follow over a very long period of time in order to really you know ensure that he has a good successful wealth creation journey so what are the pitfalls you know like rohan also mentioned today we are going to talk about certain um, uh, you know things which an individual needs to keep in mind while he's moving on is his in his investment journey so let me just uh, you know move on to uh, the f- first slide so you know as you can see in this first slide you know we have two uh, uh, two lines that you can see one is a blue line which basically is the investment return what do we mean by investment return when a product is launched and over a period of time that product performs say after 2 years after 3 years you calculate what is the return that product has made so investment return is the product return uh, you know which which the or the return which the product has created but if you look at the gray line which is almost half uh, that of blue line that shows the investor return now why this this is a question which people should ask themselves why there is a difference between investment return and investor return and this uh, you know gap the difference is is known as behavioral gap you know when we when we study uh, behavioral economics when we study behavioral investing you know this chart is one of the most important charts uh, which which uh, you know is shown over there that there is a clear difference between what a return an investor gets and what a return that product gives and and this uh, you know uh, return is this return differential is because of a reason and this basically this reason is that investor has his or her own behavioral biases and because of behavioral biases and these biases you know it is not that a person is uh, you know does not understand but these biases are inbuilt these biases have been developed in human beings over hundreds and thousands of years so you know uh, one needs to be aware about them in order to overcome them uh, can we do anything can can we say if a person is having a bias then that person is not thinking correctly no but as an investor it becomes very important for us to understand that we the way in which we are behaving in a particular situation maybe that is because of some of the investment or behavioral biases so you know we will we will talk about this uh, you know more in detail in the next slides so if you really look at this chart uh, uh, you know i believe that this is one of the most important charts uh, it is not showing completely i don't know why okay now you can see this now when you look at this chart i believe every investor should have a very close look at this chart usually intuitively what comes to our mind when it when we think about investing the first thing that an investor does is that he looks at the return of the product you know that is the first thing which comes to his mind and the, and then you know he thinks about which is the best performing product that he can invest in so that he can get the maximum return you know we hardly think about that investing is a very very long term process you know you may have a lot of money but i think the most important possession of any individual is the time and the more time that you have in your hand the more wealth that you will create in your life so what is more important in my view is not a best performing product but a lot of time at your hand because time corrects a lot of mistakes or a lot of unfortunate incidents which happen in markets so you know this chart what what it tells us is it you know uh, you if you look at the yellow highlighted uh, uh, portion you will find that it is written that returns we don't have any control on returns as investors we need to understand there will be certain smart guys who will tell you that boss mai to paisa bana sakta hu mere ko paisa banana aata hai but you know over a very long period of time what we have realized as investors is that you know this is something which is not in our control so what is there what are the things that are there in our control which will ensure that the outcome that we have is a good outcome in terms of achieving our end goal of wealth creation so what we strongly believe is 
that one of the most important aspects that an investor has to focus on in order to really create wealth for himself or herself is to have a control on his behavior. That is number point number one. Point number two, you should start early. You, sh you should have a lot of time at your hand because time will correct a lot of uh, unfortunate events which will happen in the economy, in the markets. Third, one needs to con have a control on, on his, his or her greed. By that I mean, one needs to really do an assessment that what is my risk taking ability and this ability is different for different people. So therefore, every individual has to do this assessment. And the third thing that we have to focus on is how much of risk I'm willing to take or my, my temperament can, can I take how much of risk? And probably the fourth thing is what is a cost? By cost, we mean every product has an underlined cost. So an, an investor has to focus on cost. They have to identify products which are, you know, cost competitive in the sense that which are not charging exorbitant. You don't have to really make things very complex. You have to keep your life simple and you have to focus on these four things. You have to focus on things that are there in your control. There is no point in really ideating, thinking or, or probably trying to find a solution on, on things that are beyond your control. And returns on any investment are beyond your controls. So I think this is a very important slide, uh, you know, from, from a perspective of a investor who's looking at his, uh, who's starting his investment journey. Now, uh, when we talk about behavior, why? short story uh, wherein you will see you know uh, this story if you have re read the book uh, psychology of money by morgan housel this uh, this uh, story has been mentioned over there also but let us just go through it once again in order to really prove the point that why investor behavior is more important than investment knowledge so here here there are two people one is uh, a lady grace groner she died in 2010 at the age of 100 and she left $7 million for charity. $7 million is a lot of money. Now, she had neither relevant experience nor any connection with Wealth Advisor. She earned the money and through continuous small investments in equity, she created this nest egg. So, you know, this is a very clear example wherein a lady who's, who's kind of, I'm not saying she's dumb, she's intelligent. She knows saving is important. She knows... Uh, you know, investing is important, but she's not really raking her brain. She's not every day looking at her portfolio. She's just investing on a very regular basis and look at the end result. There, at the same time, there is this. there was this guy and this is a real story. You know, there is this guy called Richard Fuscon, who's a former vice, vice chairman of Merrill Lynch, Latin America division. He declared personal bankruptcy. Now, very, very contrasting. A guy who's a vice chairman of ML, Merrill Lynch. You know, he is into investment business and he is declaring, you know, bankruptcy. Now, you know, he declared bankruptcy, fighting off foreclosure of two homes, one of which was nearly 20,000 square feet and which had, on which he had to pay about $66,000 a month. So, you know, now let us try to connect, connect it to investor behavior or, or a human behavior. Here you find a guy who's very successful, working for one of the top uh, wealth uh, managers of the world. But still, he was not very prudent with his money. He invested or he spent that money on things probably which he did not require at all. And at the other, other end, there is this lady who did not know much about investing. But still, she knew one thing that if she continuously keep on putting small amounts of money into equity on a regular basis, she was able to create a huge corpus by the time she died. So, you know, this is a clear example of investor behavior. And two or three things which I would like to mention here in terms of what the investor should definitely prod over while, in, while starting their investment journey or during their investment journey is 
that the most valuable asset that you have is time and not money. We have to understand this. We think it otherwise. Second, investing, saving, and spending. That these things you have to look at from a lens of time. When you are investing, you have to give a lot of time to your investment. When you are saving, why do you save? You have to save because you want a good future. While spending, you have to have a control on yourself. You have to spend on things that are essential to you. I'm not saying you don't have to enjoy, but you don't have to splurge because ultimately delayed gratification is something which is, you know, which people don't consider. And especially the young, uh, you know, people that we have all around us, they don't believe in delayed gratification, but delayed gratification, if you try to adopt in a certain manner in your life, that really, you know, uh, uh, makes you independent, uh, makes your uh, a lot more time available to you to do what all things you want to do. So I think these are the things that we have to keep in our mind uh, while we are going through our investment journey. So, you know, I spoke about investment biases and I also mentioned that the basis of these biases is what human beings have gone through all you know, these last thousand, two thousand years of evolvement of human race. We all remember that we used to live in caves. There used to be no certainty in terms of food. We had to hunt our food three times a day. So, you know, this all these struggles that the human uh, beings have gone through have led to these biases. And these biases are very much reflected when we try to invest. So, you know, these are the, some of the biases which you can, you know, see on your screen. Loss aversion bias. This we see so often in stock markets. Then there is confirmation bias, investment bias, authority bias. We'll just go through these biases in a very quick manner so that you have some bit of idea. And it is very important for you to remember these biases. And whenever you are taking any decision on your investment, probably you will have to check with yourself. Am I acting in certain, uh, you know, manner, whether any bias is playing out in my decision? So I think if an investor understands these biases and just, you know, while taking any investment decision, goes through these biases once more in order to ascertain that I am not acting in a biased manner, it will really help in terms of your wealth, wealth creation journey. So let us just, uh, you know, uh, deep dive into uh, many of these biases. So loss aversion bias, as I told you, is one of the biases that we see in stock markets so often, especially retail investors. You know, what this bias tells us is that gaining 500 rupees will not give us that kind of a kick. As much of pain a losing 500 rupees will give us. If you will lose something, that will give you more pain. If you will gain something, that will not give you that kind of a pleasure. And because of this, this is the basis of loss aversion. So what do we really mean by this? Now, these two gentlemen who are there on the screen, they are kind of authority on, uh, you know, behavioral finance. And uh, Daniel Kahneman has written, uh, along with Amos Tversky, they have written some great books on behavioral finance. And uh, definitely, you know, you should look at their books and probably, you know, try to go through those books because they have, tons and tons of uh, information about how an individual behaves in different situations and how can you overcome that. You know, I think more important is that we have to overcome these biases so that we don't fall in those traps. So according to Darian Kahneman, pain from a financial loss is twice the pleasure from a similar gain. So what, what it really tells us is that don't be so obsessive about what you hold in your portfolio. Usually what we have seen in this, uh, you know, electronic age, what we find is that everyone is having a portfolio. You are opening your portfolio 10 times a day. You're trying to see how much you have made every day. And what it does is it, it leads to what we call as loss aversion. Wherein if you have taken a wrong decision and believe me, you will take wrong decisions. Even fund managers, they take wrong decisions. They are not gods. They are people like you and me. The only thing is they are probably, you know, more knowledgeable. They have 
some academic qualification and they have been sitting in front of screen for a quite a long period of time and they have control on their biases you know but they can also be wrong so whenever you are wrong please cut your loss usually what we find in retail investor that if they take a wrong decision and if the stock falls or if the portfolio maybe a mutual fund scheme falls then they will not sell it till the time they get their cost price and the moment they get their cost cost price you know they will exit so they have taken two wrong decisions one is that they have sold they have not sold when the loss started happening and they sold when probably the correction was over and recovery was due so i think you know this this uh, uh, loss aversion really tells you that boss as a human being i will always go through the pain you know if i i if i see a loss in my portfolio but i have to have control you know because markets are cyclical something which has gone down will come up also and if you have taken a wrong call please cut your loss because there is no point in thinking that boss i am going to make a loss on this trade doesn't matter you will make gains on other trades you know as human beings you will make mistakes please be aware of that and try to cut your losses i think that's the message which uh, this loss aversion bias tells us second thing which is also very very uh, you know uh, clear when we look at around us is that people try to conform themselves uh, you know to people who are there around them their friends you know if a friend has bought a stock you know you will also like to buy that stock this is very normal but this also is a kind of a bias that you know so there was an experiment which was done so you know all these things are not theory there are experiments which have been done and they have been proved scientifically that these biases exist uh, so you know there is this ash uh, conformity experiment which was done and the youtube link is also there i will not waste time but i'll just you know try to summarize what what this experiment uh, you know uh, concluded three out of four people ignored what they could see so evidently with their own eyes so you know this in this experiment we we take people through a particular uh, uh, you know two two pictures are shown to them now one picture is slightly bigger than the other picture now they say if there are 10 people who are taking this ash conformity experiment nine people belong to the person who is conducting the experiment now these nine people so there are two pictures which are shown and people are asked which one is the larger one of the two and nine people give the wrong answer the smaller picture they say this is bigger the 10th guy who's absolutely unbiased who's an outsider looking that nine people have given that answer in spite of the fact he can very easily see which picture is larger picture he also conforms with the crowd and he also also gives an answer which is you know which is given by the other nine so this is what we know as social conformity uh, wherein without in spite of the fact that we are very clear that what what we are seeing is something which is wrong but since other people who are there around us say it is right we also say it is right so you know uh, due to partial information people take investing decision based on what they see others doing this is also known as herding so you know to an investor the clear uh, you know mandate is don't just follow the crowd pay more attention to detailed and do detailed analysis of the stories that that you hear you know these days twitter uh, you know and and uh, facebook and and uh, you know linkedin there is so much of information which gets thrown to you don't just believe in the in those stories till the time you do some due diligence in terms of understanding whether what is being told to you is correct or not so pay more attention to detailed analysis another very very important bias is known as action bias so you know you have a portfolio now you try to invest say for your retirement now that retirement is 25 30 years ahead but you know you cannot sit idle as human beings you know we want to do something so there is this some there is there is this bias which is known as action bias 
Every day we would like to do a trade. Every day we would like to look at the portfolio. Every day we would like to calculate the CAGR return on my investment. So this action bias, uh, you know, there is an experiment which was done, a beautiful experiment wherein uh, there is a goalkeeper and there is a goalie. Now, goalkeeper, now there are only, there are three things which the goalkeeper can do. Either he can move towards right or he can move towards left or he can stay put. Now, staying put means he's not taking any action. Going towards right, going towards left, he's taking action. So in this, uh, you know, uh, experiment, 266 penalty kicks were taken. So the striker chose to kick 32% on the left side, 29% center and 39% on the right side. But the goalkeeper, 94% of the time, he either moved towards left or right. Now this is telling you that is the way a human being behaves because there is a urgency for him. They, because when you are a goalkeeper, you know the, the crowd is there. You know, the, there is a house full in the stadium. There is a goalie who's, who's trying to uh, take that penalty kick. As a human being, automatically you would like to take some action. If you stay put, you know, it will be perceived as if you're not trying anything. So this is what we know as action bias. And, human, and our investors need to be aware of this action bias. We need to avoid this action bias during investing because usually to, too much of action leads to your taking wrong decisions. You know, inaction probably is the best thing that you can do to ensure that your wealth creation journey is a good one. So authority bias, again, you know, all these channels which are there on, on a daily basis, you know, 24 by 7, they will bring in uh, people who are so-called experts. They will give you advice on stocks on a daily basis. You know, sometimes I get so amazed that, you know, and we see them also on a regular basis. We look forward to, you know, uh, looking at that program. There is this gentleman, Mr. Basin, who used to be in IFL. Every day he will come on ET now, he'll give you four ideas. And there are so many of them, uh, you know, like them. So the point is that someone comes on TV. We have never gone on TV. To, nobody has taken our interview. So what we believe is that this guy is coming on TV. He's very intelligent. That is why he's coming on TV. So, you know, there is some kind of a authority bias, which, you know, comes in. So, you know, people try to follow. Uh, we're looking at this channel, whatever is advised, they try to follow. Sometimes they are right, sometimes they are wrong. But most of the time on a net basis, they are wrong. They lose money. So, you know, what authority bias is telling us that we, I'm not saying you don't listen to experts, listen to experts, but don't blindly follow them. Because there is an inherent bias within us as human beings, which is called as authority bias. We should be aware of that. So whatever we hear, we will try to, you know, do some due diligence on that before acting on the advice which is being given to us. So I think this is also one of the very important biases that, uh, you know, our investors need to keep in mind during their investment journey. Then there is something called as confirmation bias, uh, wherein concentrate on information that support your beliefs. This is also very natural to human beings. We like people who will say yes to us. Uh, you know, whatever we feel, if somebody really says that I also feel like that, we feel very good. So this is again something which is very inherent to human beings. So confirmation bias tells us that we should be aware of this. If we are surrounded by yes man people, then probably we are gone. Then we will never be able to succeed in life in whatever work that we are doing. And this bias also tells us that consider information from multiple sources before arriving at any decision. Because there is an inherent bias within us, which is known as confirmation bias. If we find that somebody is saying about a talking about a particular stock, which we are holding in our portfolio, we will have this confirmation bias. Ki boss, Mary call to right. Hai. So let me stay invested. So you know, uh, this is another very important uh, you know bias that one has to uh, 
keep in mind. So I think I'm I'm done with biases, but now I'll come to four or five slides, which are kind of factual statements that an investor needs to keep in mind. Uh, again, in order to avoid behavioral biases, in order to ensure that he has a good wealth creation journey ahead of himself or herself. So facts which help in wealth creation, let's, let's just go through them quickly. Now, staying invested, I'll give you uh, one beautiful example of Indian markets. Now, these slides are of S&P 500. Why we have taken S&P 500 is primarily because they have, uh, you know, data which, which goes back almost 100 years. Indian market data is available from 1979 onwards. But, you know, here uh, data of S&P is available right from 1920s onwards. So, you know. Uh, but but still, let me give you an example that you can relate to, uh, you know, very easily. If you look at Indian index, Sensex, as we know it, it is around 60,000 odd today. Now, this index was launched in 1979. It was 100 at that time. So it has done 600 times in last 43 years, which basically means around 15% CAGR over a very long period of time. And honestly, the young investors who are coming today, they have to keep in mind that they have a very long runway ahead of them. Not only, you know, they don't have to uh, earn for up to 60 years like, you know, people do today. You know, maybe they, if they start early, they'll be able to free themselves in terms of doing their day job, uh, you know, very, very fast. But the point is that they are going to live much, much longer than us, than our generation. You know, every 10 years, the way in which medical science is, uh, you know, progressing, every 10 years, the average age increases by almost two and a half years. So, you know, today, if Indians are living uh, at about 70 years, 70, 72 years is the average age of Indians. I'm very sure the people who are in their 20s today, they will not died even at 90. So there is a big challenge there. You have to stay invested for a long, long period of time. And that is what this slide is telling you. That if you really look at S&P 500 from 1928 to 2022, look at this journey, how it has been an uptrending journey. But the only thing that we have to remember is within this journey, there will be hiccups. You have to stay invested. That's the message which this slide is giving to you. So again, uh, here, uh, I think the last paragraph, the last black, uh, uh, you know, box, just focus on that. The market went higher in 73% in from 1992 to nine, 2022. Market has gone up 73% of number of years in terms of number of years 73 percent time market has gone up it is only 27 percent of time and we are talking about 100 years so look at the chances of you making tons of wealth they are much much higher but usually what happens is people will look at mark look at the tv the expert will come on tv and he will say market are going to correct so what we will think that boss abhi book kar lete hai, prof will come again but will come again kabhi nahi hota you know if you look at the present market people have been waiting for correction a meaningful correction in market which has not happened markets have been kind of going up only there are a lot of investors whom we know they are sitting on sidelines from 11000 nifty today we are at what 18000 so you know point is for a retail investor it is prudent that he stays invested because over a long period of time and 100 years of history of uh, S&P 500, which is the US uh, broad-based index, tells us that 73% of the time annual returns have been positive. So, you know, don't worry too much about corrections. Correction will come. In every 10 years, there will be a 40%, 50% correction. You know, you can look at Indian markets also. Every three to five years, there will be an eight, 10 percent correction. Live with that correction because there is no point in getting in and getting out is the message which this slide is giving. 
Now, again, this slide, again, a very long period of data. It is what it what this slide is showing you is that uh, if you really look at these red dots, these red dots and then these gray lines, what it, in this particular year market has given a correction of more than 10 percent. But by the end of the year, market has closed positive. This is what this shows. So basically, if a correction happens and if a large correction happens, markets are going to rebound for sure. You know, for a very long period of time, you have seen and all these, except for a few exceptions, there will be some exceptions. But for a very long period of time, you will see more number of instances, much more number of instances where in spite of a 10% correction, by the end of the year, markets closed in a big positive territory, uh, you know, in spite of that correction. So, you know, an investor needs to keep this in mind that market declines are common. Don't worry too much. Don't overthink. So you will always find, you know, reasons to sell. There will be people who will be bearish on markets, who will be bearish on economy. They will say interest rates will go high, markets will correct. They will say, boss, economy is doing very badly. Export sector is not doing well. You please sell or probably go into debt and we will wait when the market economy will recover. You know, there are, these are the instances and so many instances wherein Year on year, we are trying to tell you that every year there has been a reason to sell. But we have also seen that over a long period of time, what kind of a return the market has made or delivered. So there will always be a reason to sell. For a retail investor, he doesn't have to overthink. He has to be disciplined like Grace Groner. Every month, a little bit of savings going into investment through an SIP, that is a way uh, to wealth creation for a retail investor. Don't overthink. There will always be reasons. People will tell you 10 reasons. You know, in a market, there is a buyer and there is a seller. Such a huge contradiction. One person is positive on market, other person is negative on market. So there will always be reasons to buy. There will always be reasons to sell. What is more important for a retail investor is to be disciplined. Now, a very important slide, which basically, you know, tells you that if you miss a few days, you know, like, like we mentioned in the previous slides, that people feel that right now maybe markets are overvalued, so let me move out of equity. Maybe, you know, when markets will correct, I'll go back in. If you miss the 10 best days, your return is almost halved. You have to understand that. Missing those, because if you miss those few days in the market, because you are sitting in cash, because you had a view that markets will correct, those 10 days will eat half of your returns. So missing best days hurts your return, which you will never be able to recoup in one life. So this is another very, very important message. Why we have to stay invested is because we don't know. Boss, if somebody tells you that he knows what is going to happen in the market tomorrow and he's trying to fool you, there is no God on earth. You know, we are all human beings. Whatever we tell you is our view on market. We are not sure whether that view is going to play out or not. Market or probably returns, how you create returns in market, it is a game of probabilities. Okay. And in probability, you cannot be 100% sure. There is always, you know, certain element of luck, which probably also contributes to your returns. So missing best days hurts returns. So don't try to time the market. Don't try to move in and move out because you'll not be able to win that game. So again, you know, going back to that behavioral gap, you know, why that behavioral gap is there? Because, you know, one is because, you know, we have certain biases because of which when there is huge correction, we will get very, very fearful and we will get out. An average investor underperforms due to, and second is that we want to time. So, you know, average investors tries to time the market and look at the investor return and look at the equity market returns. Huge difference. And power of compounding. Compounding is, uh, you know, uh, a magical uh, thing which happens 
uh, in life also you know if you learn if you are a regular and voracious reader you know your intelligence will compound your knowledge will compound similarly if you stay invested and you reinvest your gains into market that is what is known as compounding and you know compounding uh, creates magical returns i will give you one example now i told you that our market is up 600 times in last 43 years now this is 15% cagr let me pres- let me assume let us assume if this 15% would have been 17% only 2% more then this 600 is how much boss this 600 will be 1200 times so that is the magic of compounding you know a small portion 2% increase in return on a cagr basis will almost double the market you know 600 times to 1200 times that is the magic of compounding you have to stay invested you have to bear the bad times and the compounding will kick in so i think uh, you know these are my this is my last slide uh, so you know i'll just summarize the key points keep a watch on your portfolio but don't overstock you have to do a review on a six monthly or an annual basis but don't you know look at the portfolio returns on a daily basis don't follow the crowd be a smart investor out of sheer impatience don't keep churning portfolio if you are finding return abhi nahi aa rahe hain give some time goal based investment is always more effective that is what we have seen you know uh, while while selling mutual funds all these years that if you assign a goal to your investment then your behavioral biases are taken care automatically because each one of us wants to achieve our personal goals in a volatile market reach out to customers you know this is more from a, a distributor perspective from an investor perspective is that you have to review but only you know uh, not every time uh, so i think uh, uh, i will go back to my third slide which is basically uh, which was basically uh, focus on what you control and i will i will stop after that so let me just go to that focus on those things which are in your control okay and which is your behavior which is the time which is the risk which is the cost so i think i'll i'll stop here uh, rohan <clears throat> so very interesting session and uh, we really enjoyed the session <clears throat> uh, so uh, it it comes to the <clears throat> the conclusion is that sometimes we might have the tools and we come in our way of wealth creation well friends uh, <clears throat> uh, it's a great session for all of us uh, we learned a lot from mr sandeep and we looking forward to conduct more such sessions with uh, mr sandeep sir in the future and with sbi mutual funds so before ending the session i know you just finished any key one pointer that you would like to share with our audience so you know i'll i'll go back to what i said during the presentation the most valuable asset that you have is time and not money if right. if if an investor understands that i think he will be sorted in terms of his wealth creation journey rightly said sir <clears throat> thank you so much uh on behalf of bajaj finance limited i'll request all our viewers to please uh, download the bajaj finserv app explore the mutual fund sections over there uh, you will be able to explore uh, more than thousands of mutual funds over there also we have live on our website Uh, you can log on to bajajfinserv.in you will find the details of both the app and the web in the end of the session uh, please visit our digital properties and enjoy seamless experience of investing in mutual funds and like uh, sandeep sir said uh, we wish all our viewers and our investors uh, many best days to come so that uh, we partner in your journey of wealth creation uh, Thank you so much sir and thank you to all the viewers who have joined us for the session